Let's take your seats, members. The joint session, Louisiana Legislature will come to order. Senator Shan Weston Bloom moves with dispense with the calling of the roll of the Senate without objection so ordered. Representative Karen Carter Peterson moves to dispense with the calling of the roll of the House without objection so ordered. Speaker moves to suspend that rules to invite the Chief Justice and the Associate Justices of the Louisiana Supreme Court to join us on the floor of the House of Representatives without objection so ordered. Members, at this time I'd like to introduce Chief Justice Catherine Kimball of the 5th District, Chief Justice, excuse me, Justice Jeffrey Victory of the 2nd District, Justice Jeanette Terry O'Neill of the 3rd District, Justice Chet Traylor of the 4th District, Justice Greg Guidry of the 1st District, and Justice John Weimer of the 6th District, and Justice Burnett J. Johnson of the 7th District. Welcome. Members, before the Chief Justice gets started, I just wanted to say a few words. Chief Justice Kitty Kimball is the first female justice for the Louisiana Supreme Court, has had and has been with the highest court since 1992. Prior to that, she was the Chief Justice of the 18th Judicial District Court. She earned a law degree from Louisiana State University in 1970. She's born in Alexandria, is married to Clyde Kimball, former state representative and Depu deputy secretary of the Louisiana Department of Wildlife and Fisheries. Chief Justice Kimball and her husband have three children, four grandsons, and two granddaughters. Chief Justice, it's truly an honor and a privilege to have you with us here today to address the joint session. Thank you for being here. Good evening. I'm delighted to be here with you this evening, and I greatly appreciate the opportunity that you have given me to tell you about the state of the judiciary in Louisiana. Uh, Mr. President just introduced my court, so I will uh, omit that part of my talk. However, I will tell you that with regard to Justice Chet Trailer, this is the last state of the judiciary that he will take part in since he is a little smarter than the rest of us and he is retiring to go into private practice and make some money. <laughs> it was suggested to me by some of the members that I should keep my remarks brief. I will try to do that, but I will have to tell you that I cannot speak as rapidly as Governor Jindal. On the other hand, I do not speak as slowly as Francis Thompson. <laughs> Hopefully not as long. <laughs> but I must tell you, there are so many good things happening in our judiciary right now that I literally could speak to you for several hours and not cover all of them. But out of respect for you and out of fear of a po possible uprising, I will do my best to talk to you about just a few of those things that are happening in our branch of government right now. Immediately after my induction ceremony, our court met to set a direction for this year and beyond. We adopted a vision statement for our court Though not profound, this simple statement is the standard by which we intend to measure our judicial system and the standard by which we intend to effectuate the change necessary to bring this vision to reality. Three weeks after I became Chief Justice, I had occasion to meet with the Speaker. His first question to me was, have you completed your five-year plan? While we might need a little more time to complete the five-year plan, I believe our vision statement demonstrates the direction in which we are headed. That vision is as follows. We envision hardworking judges that treat all within their purview with kindness, fairness, and respect, and who require that same treatment by his or her employees and the attorneys who be appear before them in the court. 
a judiciary that is recognized by our state and our nation is having those qualities. We envision a judiciary that handles its work efficiently and appreciates and cares as deeply about the disposition of a child abuse case, a juvenile case, or a custody case as it does about a high profile civil lawsuit. This vision is shared not only by these justices and our court, but, but by the many hardworking judges at all levels of our state judiciary. And we have begun throughout our state judiciary to implement measures to make our vision a reality. Our court's first implementation priority is the improvement of case management at all levels of the judiciary. We want to understand why some courts and some judges' dockets are handled quickly and efficiently, and some are not. We will examine those issues and afford assistance to any court who needs help with managing their dockets. We believe very strongly that the court system should be run for the convenience of the users. To demonstrate our emphasis on these issues, we decided to begin our examination with our own court. We are in process of finalizing a contract with the National Center for State Courts, whereby the center will examine case management processes of the Louisiana Supreme Court and advise us on how we might handle the public's business in a more efficiently or timely manner. We are also reviewing all departments in the Supreme Court to improve efficiency and confidence. We have instituted management training so that our managers may better handle their supervisory functions and responsibilities and assist our staff in achieving their top job performance. We have also implemented some insightful suggestion made by our employees on how we can improve our internal uh, communications. We are not alone in this self-examination. I am proud that several of our lower courts, in anticipation of and embracing the inquiries that will be made, have already taken steps to examine their own case management operations and other improvements they may undertake to improve the performance of their job. We will continue to encourage that type examination. At the Supreme Court, we have recently taken other steps towards judicial reform. Last year, as many of you may remember, we implemented stringent rules requiring financial disclosure by our state judges. The first reporting deadline is May 15th of this year, although recent judicial candidates have already been required to file their disclosure reports. We, are also, we also revised and strengthened Canon 6 of our Code of Judicial Conduct governing the receipt of gifts by state judges. These new rules have been the source of many inquiries from our state judges as they work to comply with these new requirements. But I am encouraged that our judges are in fact acting in accordance with these new rules and are in the process of preparing their financial disclosures. We are also concentrating on improving the competency of our judges by improving the judicial education that we offer. Our state judges associations have undertaken a universal best practices effort to discover and then implement the best methods of handling cases in our court system. Last December, about 20 of the best and brightest members of the state judiciary gave up a week of their time and countless hours of preparation to present a week of new judges training for the newly elected judges on how to begin their career in a competent and knowledgeable way. We also recently held mandatory training for all judges who handle capital cases. And our Supreme Court Conference has recently authorized representatives of the Judicial College to examine successful judicial education programs in other states so that we may further improve our own education curriculum. Our court realizes that you will soon look at reapportioning yourself and others. And as we learn from new census results, what our state now looks like. We recognize the possibility of new imbalances among our Supreme Court districts as population shifts have occurred. Although there has never been a United States Supreme Court case pronouncement requiring reapportionment of the judicial branch of government, we nonetheless embrace the idea of balance in our system. The courts of appeal as well recognize the very real implications of caseload imbalance on the workloads of their judges and on the speed with which the public's business is handled. 